Let me start with, um, I think this is a, a question that everyone would have asked you, but I'm going to repeat it for my audience. I want to ask you, you know, you have seen, you saw President Mukherjee uh, growing from a regional leader to a national leader, from national leader to a, minister, a parliamentarian and then a minister, and in various capacities from defense minister to external affairs minister and to finance minister, and then eventually the president of India. What do you think did it take for him to get where he finally arrived in life? So I think his hard work, his vast knowledge about uh, various uh, subjects, uh, his uh, utmost dedication, and uh, then over the years, you know, what experience he gathered, and he didn't, you know, kind of, he used this experience, he used this understanding, you know, to uh, address any issues, however the complexities might be. I think his vast knowledge over a various uh, fee over various fields, uh, you know, that really helped him, and that actually, and and of course, you know, like he always, in his own words, that Mrs. Indira Gandhi was his greatest mentor, and as a young MP, in his very first speech, he was fortunate enough to attract the attention of uh, the then Prime Minister, Mrs. Indira Gandhi, and obviously he must, she must have seen some spark. Uh, in this uh, first term uh, member of parliament from a remote village in Bengal. So it is she who mentored him. It is she who taught him a lot. And uh, so I think, you know, it's a combination of all these uh, factors together, which kind of uh, helped, helped him in his life journey. Tell me, uh, how was he as a father? I think as a father, he would be like, as any father would be to any daughter. And obviously, like he might be, uh, you know, anybody, but uh, to a daughter, the father is a father, you know, so it doesn't really matter whether your father is the president or your father is uh, anybody. So it doesn't matter. So, you know, we had led a very, very normal childhood. And I think this is, I must say that, you know, the uh, greatest, uh, 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 you know, the credit must go to my parents and especially my mother. So they ensured that we lead a very, very normal childhood, very, very normal and no, you know, away from the trappings of power, away from the any kind of privilege. Uh, so uh, so uh, I think that is something, you know, I really give credit to my parents and especially to my mother because my father was obviously very busy uh, to get involved in everyday life of his children. Uh, but it was my mother who was really like the form, the core of the family and kept us all together. And uh, uh, she was the one, you know, who gave us these values. And pa my father was also like we spent a lot of quality time. We did not uh, like it was not that, you know, he, he spent a lot of time with us. But, you know, whenever we spent time together, you know, especially during the uh, like as, as, in his early years, at least he would try to, you know, have uh, uh, some kind of uh, time for the family during uh, for the dinner. So that was the time we would uh, sit together and, uh, you know, he would discuss about his uh, day's work in a very, very brief manner because neither, uh, I mean, I was not really interested in what is happening in politics. But he had this habit of talking about history, you know, talking about contemporary issues that what is happening and then related to, uh, you know, to, to different historical periods. You know, I mean, so he had this, you know, a different way of educating uh, his children, I would say. And and it was, it would happen very informally, as I say, over the chats, over the dinner, you know. So that is the time. And I don't remember we, I mean, I, I, I can't say that, you know, I mean, I can really literally uh, count on my fingertips that how many times we had been a, for a holiday together or very, very rare moments. But those are very rare, but very cherished moments. And uh, so uh, he was always very busy. But since my childhood, I'm seeing that, that, you know, he had been very busy. He has always been, uh, you know, his uh, priority in his life was public service and that job, what he was doing. But whatever time he gave us, you know, that was very good, very cherished uh, moments in our lives. What were his expectations from you as a daughter? Did he uh, really aspire you to be a politician? Did he train you? Was he uh, envisioning a political future for you? 
You know, I think the best thing about my parents, I would say, not just my father, but about my father and my mother, that they never try to impose any decision on us. They never try to impose any decision on us. Uh, but uh, as I say that, you know, like being a, uh, belonging to a typical Bengali family, you know, learning dance or music or something, which was very much a part of our lives, whether you take it up professionally or not, it was... Uh, kind of uh, that's not the issue so I used to learn dance since my childhood and uh, but of course you know that was there that whatever you do you have to do academically well you know you have to do well in your school you have to do well in your uh, you know so that was and after that you do whatever you want to do you know that was the a kind of uh, uh, the, the 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 policy of the family <laughs> so it was after my post-graduation I did my post-graduation in sociology from JNU so then, uh, the, I mean, uh, for me, I mean, in my head, one option was to continue with academics. Politics was nowhere in sight. I was not really interested. Or to continue with my dance as a profession. I chose that. And it was a little unusual, you know. I mean, even now also, uh, not too many people take performing art as a career, as a profession. So, but my parents were very supportive and encouraging. And they said that if you want to do, of course, you know, this is your choice. And when I, I joined politics very, very late in my life, I joined politics just about six years back in 2014. So that was also totally my decision. And so in everything in life, you know, we have taken our own decision. And I think our parents, sometimes, of course, yes, you take wrong decisions also. And my uh, parents would say that perhaps what you are doing is not right. Uh, you know, but still, if you want to do it, I mean, we are there by your side. You know, so that was something I would, I really appreciate about my parents that they never try to impose their viewpoint, their uh, wishes on us. So when when you decided that you're going to join politics, you must have spoken to your father. Was there any advice from him? Were, was there any uh, orientation from him about politics? Because politics quite complex there are so many challenges uh, you know statecraft is different and in politics itself there's so much competition and it's quite cutthroat was there any word of advice caution from your father of course he said that you know firstly you are joining politics as a at a very tough time you are joining congress at a very tough time and which is very good that shows your motivation you know but you have to be extremely patient you know, I mean, there is, uh, it's not that, you know, you are going to do something and, you know, you are going to get the reward or whatever you are expecting, you know, it's uh, not going to happen like that. And secondly, I mean, there is no, I mean, there is no uh, alternative to hard work. You really have to work hard. You really, really have to work hard and uh, just don't think, you know, you're Pranam Mukherjee's daughter. You might, that might give you and some kind of initial you know, push. But, you know, you have to create your own way. You have to make your own space. So that's, he was as simple as that, you know. I mean, they said that, you know, this is something you have to carve your own space. And nobody, uh, you know, he said just by, you know, naming your father, it's not going to, uh, you can't make any, uh, I mean, you can't make a position for yourself. And he would always say that, you know, political and intellectual legacies, you know, these need to be earned. These are not a piece of paper. It's not a kind of a, you know, material subject thing that, you know, which can be willed, which can be gifted, you know, to your offsprings. You know, this is something what you need to earn, you know. So this is, that's he said. And he, of course, he, another thing he said that, you know, you are extremely impulsive, which I am, which I am. <laughs> so he said that, you know, this is something, you know, you are getting into it. It is a, a lifelong commitment. You know, you just can't say that I'm getting bored and, you know, get out of it after two years. You know, I mean, it's not like that. You should not. So think, you know, before. Think before, you know, you are joining, you are jumping into it. So. And uh, in the last six years of your political career, do you think that, you know, his, his words of wisdom uh, came handy at various points of time? Did, did you feel that, you know, you may have missed the opportunity to learn politics from him while he was really active in politics uh, way before he became the president of India? You know, uh, Aarti, I mean, this is in my uh, uh, very, very short uh, period of uh, 
six years of political experience, you know, it's not that you can learn politics from anybody. You know, of course, you can learn from others' experiences by seeing, by watching, you know. Uh, and of course, you know, like my father, as I say, he had a vast, like, you know, he was a treasure trove of, uh, he had the knowledge about Indian politics, understanding. So he could tell you about issues. For example, you know, the farmer's agitation is happening. If he was there, he would have given me a full history of it. You know, what is, but how to actually solve it? You know, how to address that is something you have to learn from your own experience. So I asked him once, I mean, of course, you know, he passed away, you know, before uh, the farmer's agitation and all everything uh, started. But it was some, some context. Oh, yes. I think in Rajasthan uh, or I know I think in Madhya Pradesh when Jyotiraditya Sindhya left and, uh, you know, the problems within Congress. So I said, you know, like even in your time also, there was so much, you know, like, I mean, you hear about you know, senior people leaving. I mean, Congress split because of that, you know, Congress I and uh, so I said, you know, how did you manage? So he said, politics is nothing but the art of conflict management. And I said, what would you have done if you are in the here? He said, I can't sit here, you know, sitting on the dining table and give you a roadmap that what could be done. You know, he said, you go talk to people, discuss with people and, you know, like and out of that a uh, solution emerges. You know, it, there can't be a two plus two equal to four kind of a solution. Every every situation has got its different nuances. And this is the, I mean, I mean, politics is nothing but art of conflict management. And not only just politics, even governing statecraft in a place like India, which is an extremely complex society. You know, something, somebody wants this, somebody wants something totally contradictory. Even governance is also nothing but an art of conflict management and try to, you know, try to address, you know, these various complexities of demands of different groups and sometimes totally contradictory. So whether it's politics, whether it's governance, you know, you have to keep that diverse opinion of people in mind and try to find a solution. So there is no kind of, uh, again, you know, no two plus two equal to four kind of a solution no. for this. You have to be there. You have to be there. And, you know, this comes with experience. This comes with experience. This comes with, uh, uh, you know, I mean, with your own equation with people. So it doesn't happen in one day. I'm so glad uh, you brought this up uh, because this is the insight uh, I got from reading his book, uh, The Presidential Years, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, throughout the book, what I really felt about President Mukherjee was that he was a man who believed in solutions. He was a man who really cared for a diplomacy. He really believed in reaching out to people in a conflict situation. And uh, while he was the external affairs minister, that's uh, my domain area, incidentally, I uh, understood from, from this book that he was always interested in uh, having peace with even with Pakistan, for example, or, uh, you know, he maintains in his book that India should not really take sides between the U.S. or China, the U.S. or the Soviet Union, initial, you know, earlier and now Russia. Uh, India should maintain a balance. You traveled with him a, a few times, you know, on his uh, uh, foreign trips, for example, to Bangladesh. And Bangladesh, incidentally, is uh, where your mother comes from. And uh, President Mukherjee was honored uh, by Bangladesh government. And incidentally, this is uh, the 50th year of Bangladesh's, uh, you know, liberation. Uh. So I want to ask you, while going uh, to Bangladesh, what kind of uh, what kind of image and what kind of impressions did you gather while he was meeting the head heads of the state while he was meeting? people at large? Uh, well, Bangla, Bang, not only just Bangladesh, but, you know, the neighboring countries, uh, I mean, were very, very kind of uh, uh, relationship with the neighboring countries, uh, were very close to his heart because, you know, he would always say that, you know, you ca can choose your friends, but, you know, you can't choose your neighbors. So whosoever they are, you have to live with them. And with Bangladesh, of course, there is a you know, being also Bengali, my mother being from, uh, you know, the uh, East Bengal, I mean, there has been a very strong emotional connect. 
and in the 1970s you know when my father my father became a member of parliament in 1969 and in 1970 71 you know the war started but before that there was this huge influx of refugees uh, you know from uh, uh, from the then east pakistan to bengal and uh, being a bengali and i know i have uh, of course i was too young to remember it but you know i have read the contemporary literature of the time you know as if the whole of bengal you know the west bengal you know people opened their doors to these refugees there was a real strong fellow feeling so obviously there was an emotional connect there was a you know emotional connect being a bengali with the suffering of the people of uh, the then is east bengal and you know, the way they were uh, kind of uh, uh, you know prosecuted and persecuted by their own government and of course uh, mrs indira gandhi used my father's uh, uh, knowledge very close i mean he he was also like very much interested in the politics of uh, uh, again the, the east bengal and uh, uh, he was quite inspired by mujibur rahman so mrs indira gandhi she he was a part of the core team of mrs indira gandhi's uh, you know uh, uh, i mean i mean i will not i, 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 I mean east pakistan policy you know but this pakistan policy and he was he also accompanied mrs gandhi you know to her various trips to uh, not to, i didn't go to us but he went to a few countries uh, with her in europe you know to and plus mrs gandhi also sent him and other mps to different other uh, you know foreign countries to gather international support and to present with the bangladesh uh, sorry with the india's uh, with india's uh, uh, side india side of the uh, of, of the argument that you know why it is the well, the whole the issue was that this is not just india's problem alone you know yeah. india being a third world country cannot take the responsibility of you know sheltering and feeding so many refugees so there has to be an international solution so you know you are a foreign foreign policy uh, you know <laughs> expert this is your domain so it was a something of a very close emotional moment also for my father you know when bangladesh was finally liberated and then you know like sheikh hasina and when after mujibur uh, 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 sheikh mujib's uh, assassination and of the whole family was wiped out only uh, uh, sheikh hasina and uh, sheikh uh, uh, rehana these two sisters were spared because they were in germany at that time and then indian government gave them uh, asylum in india and that time my father was kind of made he was a junior minister he was made responsible to uh, uh, to ensure that you know they were comfortable and everything that is the time both uh, sheik hasina and sheik rehana became uh, very very close to our family very close to our family and uh, i mean there was i mean a very strong personal relationship uh, developed my father was foreign minister then uh, in the up government and uh, my mother was very very unwell so she could not attend any you know official dinner i mean or, so uh, sheikh hasina broke all protocol and came to meet my uh, mother at our residence so so it shows and in fact i would like to tell you a very interesting uh, anecdote which i heard from my father at adcs so after becoming the president my father uh, it, the, uh, to, to bangladesh was was first foreign trip as a president so i i did not go i did not go my mother went and this story i heard from a bengali adc uh, who was there uh, he said Ma- madam i mean i have never seen anything like in my life so whenever you know, it is their responsibility to brief the president you know to have the list of you know all the appointments and you know to brief the president that okay you know this gentleman is coming to meet you this is this he said what introduction what briefing i mean he knew everybody by name you know <laughs> wow and you know you are not supposed to touch president's feet you are supposed to maintain a distance he said what protocol what everything and if you try to stop them he said he would in bengali would say like hamara dada hai who are you to stop us so whether we you know the adc are all young he said tum jab matlab tumhe kya pata dada ke sath hamara kitna saalon ka rishta hai yeah he said you know we have never seen anything like that you know and he was addressing everybody by name by their first name he was inquiring about their you know uh, wife and children by their names you know so i mean ki wo 
कैसे है वो अभी कौन सी ईयर में है बच्चा you know so like that you know so my father has been very very closely uh, you know associated uh, with bangladesh politics and even after his uh, 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 presidential years the only visit you know he made uh, uh, abroad any trip was again bangladesh so that is the time i uh, you know went with him and i saw the love and affection you know people had uh, even the general people you know had uh, for him it was really amazing and when he visited as a president with my mother so he went uh, they went to my mother's ancestral village and actually after marriage he was visiting there for the first time oh. so he was given, he was given a traditional you know damat ko jaise welcome karte hai na that traditional welcome <laughs> so he said after so many years of my marriage i am feeling like a newly wed <laughs> groom again so it was uh, Uh, very very uh, i think uh, 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 very special kind of relationship and india bangladesh always have a very strong very special relationship and uh, i have i have seen it uh, you know through my parents that actually how close uh, the relationship could also be at a very very personal level president mukherjee played several roles uh, and i think you know that comes through this book as well as you pointed out he has written other books as well um, in fact covering different phases of his life in his political journey uh, and if you had to choose one of the roles that he played and which really were the most uh, effective and inspirational for you as not only as his as his daughter but uh but as a citizen of india as a reader as a reader which one would you pick uh uh first and second which roles do you think had the most uh impact on your life as a, as a person it is very difficult to say that because as i say that you know you can, as a daughter i can't uh, you know uh, i i can't define my father into you know what are tight compartments of roles and uh, so you know whether how good or bad he was as a foreign minister or as a finance minister or even as the president of india that is not for me to judge that is not for me to judge and that is for the people of india that is for uh, uh, the academician that is for the policy the future generation you know the daughter will always look at her father with a very indulgent eye so as far as this public uh responsibilities are concerned public roles he has played you know that is uh, uh, for me i don't think it's fair uh, for me because i <laughs> my father was great on everything you know <laughs> very honest but what i really admired about him and i really wish i had that quality you know that ability to work hard he used to work for 18 19 hours a day despite that you know he of course his razor sharp memory you know his razor sharp memory i mean he would it's commented upon by all his you know anybody who uh, knew him and his ability not only to read absorb very quickly and retain but his ability also to you know bring that knowledge as part of the argument or as a part of the solution you know i think that is something fantastic and you know like if you i mean if i i mean of course i heard a lot about a lot of his parliamentary debates and all he would you know like bring out some facts from somewhere something you know so you know lot of people might be knowing it even i would also be knowing it but while you are you know at the moment you know to retain that and to apply it his application was also something absolutely fabulous and being a spokesperson of my party and especially when you are uh, participating in debates you know many a times you know about it but then you forget to tell it you forget to use that particular fact or that particular logic as a counter argument and later on you say oh i should have said this oh i should have said that you know <laughs> so that ability to immediately apply your knowledge you know i think that is something i wish you know i could uh, i i i had you know i mean it's always oh ye bolna chahiye tha are kyun nahi bol that kind of a thing but i think you know my father he wasn't uh, born with any silver spoon he had a very very tough life and he has achieved whatever he has achieved is through his sheer merit 
and hard work. And uh, so I mean, at the end of it, you know, let me say that I'm an extremely, you know, proud daughter, you know, and I feel blessed to be born into, you know, born as he's and my mother's daughter, you know, and that's been for me and I think will remain the greatest blessing for me. Tell our viewers, what are your favorite moments that you shared with him? Like, which will, which you will never forget? You know, there are so many. I mean, how can I? I mean, how can I, you know? I mean, if I have an, uh, with, I'm sure with you, your father, there would be so many. But, uh, okay, yeah, let me, uh, you know, like while uh, in my growing up years, I must be, I was also, this is one habit I uh, got from my, uh, father, I also read a lot. I also read a lot. And uh, so I was reading a book. I must be about 13, 14 or something like that. A uh, Bengali uh, magazine, which is not exactly known for its high literary value. <laughs> very, very. <laughs> saw me reading that. And he said, why are you reading this rubbish? So I said, until unless I read rubbish, until unless I read everything, how can I differentiate between good and bad? So he said, yeah, you have a point. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they say that's what I liked about my father, you know, that he left the decision on us, you know, and when I made my point, I mean, he accepted it. So, so I mean, that is something I really, really liked, uh, you know, about my father, that fine, I mean, he said it is rubbish, but still when I say that unless you read both good and bad, how can you differentiate? <laughs> Fair enough. Nice. Um, and on that beautiful note, I will again uh, thank you so much for your time today and hope to meet you soon.